Though the Jaguar XC has been around since 2015, it's entirely possible that as a buyer of a compact to mid-sized premium sports saloon, you might not have yet come across it. If that's the case, allow us to introduce you to this revised version which is smarter, quieter and classier inside than the original and remains appealingly different to the usual German suspects in this segment. On paper at least, it now seems to have the design, technology and ambition necessary to succeed in this sector with the dynamics of a BMW and the luxury of a Mercedes, plus the uh, efficiency and connectivity modern business buyers now expect. It's a surprisingly strong contender. Right from the off in an XC, you get to experience what Jaguar's engineers call the 50 meter feel, the all important first impression that any vehicle conveys about the way it will drive. This one feels sharp, purposeful, and from the very start, beautifully composed over our country's terrible tarmac. Now, part of that is due to a much more sophisticated suspension system than most competitors use, uh, a so-called integral link setup that's particularly good on a route with quick sweeping open bends over which this car sweeps imperiously from turn to turn and soaks up undulations with perfect poise. Uh, the beautifully weighted steering also helps, although not quite so good is the 8-speed ZF Auto gearbox which is now mandatory on all versions of this Jaguar. And this can occasionally be found hunting around for the right ratio when a rapid burst of forward motion is called for. On all XC models these days, that transmission has to be matched with a two-litre four-cylinder Ingenium engine. Uh, there's a choice of three with horsepower outputs designated by their badging. Most will choose the D180 diesel unit that we're trying here, uh, primarily because of its eco-minded frugality. Whether you opt for rear-wheel drive or the optional all-wheel drive setup we're trying here, it manages up to 50.7 mpg on the WLTP-rated combined cycle and up to 130 grams per kilometre of any DC rated CO2. Plus at launch, the XE D180 was the only diesel model in the class able to comply with the stringent RDE2 NOx emissions limit, which aids company car drivers with a 4% BIK tax rate cut. Uh, there are two petrol alternatives, the rear drive only P250 and the all wheel drive P300 model. All benefit from a standard Jaguar drive control driving mode system, which can help to set the car up for the way that you wanna drive it. Jaguar claims to have reinvented the XE, which is something of an exaggeration, but there is little doubt that this revised version has a more assertive air than its predecessor. Every model now gets beadier LED headlights, sleeker LED tail lamps, and alloy wheels of at least 18 inches in size. Like its sports saloon predecessor, the company's classic Mark II model of the 60s, it remains a cutting-edge design. It's still the only car in its class to use an aluminium intensive monocoque and that's part of the brand's lightweight modular vehicle architecture. Take a seat inside and if you happen to be familiar with the original version of this model you'll notice a significant move up market thanks to a far more extensive use of soft touch materials and a completely different level of infotainment technology. As before you sit quite low here cocooned by a wide centre console fashioned with stitched leather and piano black trimming which creates far more of a cockpit style feel than you'll get in Rivals. Uh, there's a slicker pistol grip style gear stick from the brand's F-Type sports car to replace the awful old circular transmission selector. Uh, redesigned door cards free up fractionally greater space for your elbows. Uh, plus there's a much higher level of spec with the standardization of features like leather upholstery and 12-way electrically adjustable front seats. The key change though lies with the addition of Jaguar's new Touch Pro technology, which gives you this 10 inch upper screen and on top variants, also a 5.5 inch complementary lower one. Most models get this 12.3 inch interactive driver display digital instrument cluster too. Right, time to take a seat in the rear. It's as tight in the back of an XE as it always was. The ambiance not helped by the way that the high rear deck initially imbues a slightly claustrophobic feel. Once you get yourself comfortable though, uh, maybe fold down this center armrest with its twin cup holders and stretch your elbows out a bit, uh, you'll find it is a little more spacious than it first appears. 
finally, let's take a look at the cargo area. Previously rated at 455 litres, it's now just 410 litres in size. Uh, to give you some perspective, the class average is around 480 litres. Now, although this area might be a touch more compact than before, the designers claim that it's now a more useful shape. And sure enough, it is still big enough uh, for a big golf bag or alternatively a couple of big suitcases and an assortment of small holdalls. If you need more room for luggage, then you'll have to pay extra to get the 40-20-40 split folding rear bench that most will want for the accommodation of longer items. Back in the 60s, Jaguar's classic Mark II model was arguably the market's original sports saloon. This XE, its most credible successor, is now back in class contention and it certainly now feels more like a proper Jaguar than it ever did before. It's the kind of car that, when driven hard, makes some others in the segment feel distinctly one-dimensional. Jaguar founder Sir William Lyons insisted that a sports saloon of this kind must make you feel alive. This one does. He'd have liked it.